This video shows an example of naming an alkane given its condensed structural formula. We're asked to name this compound using the UPAC nomenclature rules. We see there are no double or triple bonds between the carbon atoms, therefore this is an alkane. We start by selecting the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. We start from the left side. When we get to this carbon atom, we have to decide whether to keep going to the right or to make a sharp turn downward. If we go downward, we add three more carbons to the chain. But if we go straight to the right, we also add three more carbons to the chain, so it doesn't matter which way we go. So we'll make this our longest continuous chain. Now count the carbon atoms in this chain. And you'll see there are 10. So the name ends in decane for the alkane with 10 carbons. Now we need to find the best way to number the carbon atoms so that we have the lowest possible combination of numbers in the name. If we number from the left side starting with 1, we get this. If you look closely, you'll see that we have groups attached to carbon 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. So this is the combination of numbers we would use in this case, 2, 3, 5, 5, 6, and 7. Since we have two groups attached to carbon 5, we include the 5 twice in the list. Now we'll try switching the numbers so we start counting carbon atoms from the right side. And we get this. Numbering the carbon atoms this way, there would be groups on carbons 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9. And the combination of numbers in this name would be 4, 5, 6, 6, 8, and 9. You can see that the first set of numbers is definitely the lower possible combination. So we'll number the carbon atoms from left to right to give us this combination of numbers. At this point, we'll look at the groups attached to the chain. There are three methyl groups, two bromo groups, and one propyl group. Putting group names in alphabetical order, we get bromo first with a B, then methyl with an M, and lastly propyl with a P. The last name on the list is propyl. So we'll add propyl to the name right next to decane. Next, we must specify which carbon atom in the chain the propyl group is attached to. Looking closely, we see that the propyl group is attached to carbon 7. So we write 7 and a dash just before the propyl. The next group we add is methyl. We write methyl before the dash 7. You can see that this compound has three methyl groups. The prefix for three is tri. So we write the prefix tri in front of methyl. Note that trimethyl is all one word. Looking closely, you can see that one of the methyl groups is attached to carbon number two, and the other two are attached to carbon number five. So we write two comma five comma five dash in front of trimethyl in the name. We have to write a number for each methyl group, and since two of them are attached to carbon five, we have to write the five twice. The next group we add to the name is the first one on the alphabetical list, bromo. So we add bromo dash before 255 in the name. Because we have two bromo groups in this compound, we write the prefix di in front of the bromo. Note that dibromo is all one word. Next, we have to write numbers to specify which carbon atoms the bromo groups are attached to. You can see that one bromo group is attached to carbon number 3, and the other one is attached to carbon number 6. So we write 3, 6 dash in front of the dibromo. So now we've added all of our groups, and the final name of this compound is 3,6-dibromo-2,5,5-trimethyl-7-propyl-decane. It would be good at this point to verify to yourself that all the group names, numbers, and prefixes are correct.